You know, here at Old Sturbridge Village, it's like taking a step back in the past. There's some wonderful old structures, none better than that old covered bridge at the other end of the mill pond. And there's also some wonderful houses filled with great furniture. Come on. Now over here is an original version of a chair table. And the curator has kindly put it on display so we can show it to you. It features hardwood feet, a drawer, and when the top is up, this is the seat. You know, this strikes me as a great idea, even for today's modern home. Now I'd like to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your tools. Knowing how to use your tools safely greatly reduces the possibility of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's project. Well, after visiting all those historical sites, I decided that our table should have a maple top so that it's not ruined by someone writing on it with a ballpoint pen. It should have maple arms, and it should have maple feet. But the seat and the sides and the draw front I made from poplar because it's inexpensive, it's easy to work with, and it paints nicely. I'm going to get started today by gluing up my top. When I went down to my hardwood outlet, I was very fortunate to find he had some nice five-quarter by eight maple. Now what I've done is cut some boards, paying attention to a couple things. The growth rings, they curve up and then down alternately, and that'll give me a more stable top. And also the texture. I want the top to look as much like one piece as possible when it's all glued up. Once I've laid out the boards to that point, I can mark them, just with some slash marks. And this will keep the boards in the right orientation through the next few steps. Now I'll look at the joints. If we look at this one, we see that it rocks. And I don't want to have to apply pressure to pull these boards tightly together. I want them to fit without any pressure at all. So I'm going to have to joint each edge. Well, with the joining complete, now I'm ready to assemble the top. But you know, maple is a real hard wood, and it doesn't absorb glue into its pores like a softwood does. So to strengthen the joints, traditionally, dowels were used. You would drill a hole in each piece, slip in a dowel, and join the boards together. But today, the technology has changed, and now we use a different system called biscuit joining. And it involves two things, a tool, which has a small blade in it that cuts a half moon in the edge of the board, and these biscuits, which act like a spline. And because they're beech, they'll absorb a little bit of moisture, and when they swell up, believe me, you'll never pull the joint apart. Now, to lay out for the biscuits, I just put a pencil mark across the joint. And I'll put biscuits about every 8 or 10 inches. Now, to make the cuts, I'll just clamp my board in the bench, take the tool, and align a scribe mark on the back of the tool with my pencil mark and cut the biscuit. Now, after I cut all the biscuits, I'll be ready to join it and glue it up. Well, with all the slots cut, I'm ready to glue up. And I'll just roll the glue on the edge of the board. And now we'll insert the biscuits. Now a dab of glue on the edge of the biscuit. Okay, now I'll just join them together. And now I'll just clamp it up. The sides of my chair table are joined to the arm and to the foot with mortise and tenon joinery. Now, the foot is fairly wide, and I couldn't find any large stock to make it in one piece. So I've glued two pieces together. And that's actually working as an advantage in order to make this through mortise in the feet. I can actually cut it before I assemble it. And what I've done is taken some rough pieces of maple and laid out the width of my mortise. And I'm going to remove the material using my radial arm saw set up with this two-blade dado head, which will plow out about a half an inch of material, five-sixteenths of an inch deep. Now I just glue and clamp the halves together and set them aside to dry. Now to make these maple arms, I was able to get stock that was thick enough. And the side is joined to the arm with a mortise and tenon. And I need to cut this mortise in the arm. Now I'm going to use my router table to do that. And I've set it up with a half inch straight cutting bit. And I've marked the table to show the thickness of the bit. And I've marked the piece of wood to show the limits of the mortise. Now, this is real hard wood, so I'm only going to take a little bit at a time until I get to the one-inch depth. Now I'm just...
just going to raise the router up a little bit to cut the mortise deeper. Well, now the sides and the seat of my table are made from glued up poplar. Pieces of one by six, done much like the top, with biscuits, glue, and clamps. And over here on the bench, I've clamped down a piece that's four feet long, and that'll make the two sides. And the first thing I want to do is remove any excess glue by scraping it off with my paint scraper. And now I'll smooth it all out with my belt sander. Well, now I'm ready to take my sanded pieces and rip them to the correct width, which is about 15 inches. Now, to get a nice fresh edge, I'm going to take a little bit off of each side. Now I'll set the final width using my tape. Well, now I'm going to cut the sides to length. And to do that, I'm going to use my panel cutter, which fits in the slot of the table saw. And the first thing I want to do is square up the end of the piece. Now I'm going to cut this blank into two pieces 23 and 3 quarters inches long. Now this other blank is for the seat and the draw support. Same operation, different length. Well, now I'd like to show you how the seat and the draw support are attached to the sides. It's a dovetail joint. In fact, it's a sliding dovetail joint. It goes all the way through. It not only looks nice, but it's never going to pull apart. Using my router, which is equipped with a dovetailing bit, and more importantly, this little collar, which will ride along the edges of the template, I can now cut the male part of the dovetail in my seat. Now with the side piece clamp in place, the instructions for my jig tell me to use the same router setup, but this slot to make the female part of the dovetail. Well now let's check the fit. That's good. In fact, it's so good, I'm not going to drive it all the way, or else I'll never get it apart. Now I can do the other side. The side is joined to the foot and the armrest with tenons. And to cut the tenons, I'm going to use my radial arm with the dado head cutter as before. Now the bottom of each side piece is just curved a little bit. I've traced the outline from a little template that I made, and I'll cut it out on the bandsaw. Now my side pieces need a tenon at the bottom and at the top to fit into the armrest and into the foot. Now the thickness of the tenon is determined by the mortises that we've already made. I want them to fit in there snugly. And I'll cut the thickness using my radial arm saw and the dado head cutter. I'm just finishing off my tenons using a little back saw. Let's see how that fits. Oh, nice and snug. Okay, now I've taken a pattern and traced the outline of the arm. And I've also done that for the blanks for the feet. And now I can return to the bandsaw and cut those shapes out. My drum sander attachment is the perfect tool to smooth out any of the roughness left by the bandsaw cuts. <laughs> now I just use a fine rasp to smooth out the areas the drum sander can't get. And now I want to round off the top edges of the armrest, and I'm just going to use my router with a quarter inch rounding over bit. Now 
now I'm ready for some assembly. And all I've done is taken the foot and the arm and slipped them onto the side piece and set them in place with some clamps. Now the fastening system is just going to be some quarter inch dowels, no glue. And I want to have the dowel go through from one side, past the mortise, and catch a little bit on the other side. That'll hold it in there tightly. Now to drill the hole, I'm just going to use a quarter inch brad point bit with a little collar so that I drill to the right depth. The only glue that I do use is at the top edge of my dowels. And that's there just so that they won't pop out on their own a little bit later as, it, as the wood dries. Well, now I'll use the exact same system to fasten the armrest to the side, but of course I will have to readjust my collar. My belt sander does a good job removing any of the excess dowel. Well, now I'm going to put the horizontal members in, and I'm putting them in dry. And I'll bring it down until I'm within about an inch of where it belongs. OK. Now, to secure it so it won't move later, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on the end of the dovetail, the last half inch or so. And then I'll tip it up and put a little glue on the back edge here, and then I can drive it the rest of the way. That's never going to come apart. And now the seat. These two pieces of poplar will act as the back of the seat and the back of the draw cavity. And I'll just fasten those in place with some finish nails. The glue for the top is now dry, and the excess is removed just using a hand scraper. With the bottom of my top facing up, I'm going to divide this lengthwise grain in half, which would be about 22 inches. And then I'm going to come off across the grain 21 inches, which is the radius of my top. And at that location, I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole about a half inch deep. And you'll see what that's for in a minute. I'm just going to set this blank down for a minute and show you the jig that I've set up on the bandsaw. It's for cutting circles. And what I've done is created a pivot point. And in this case, it's about, it's 21 inches from the blade, which is the radius of our tabletop. And when I set the blank over this, turn on the saw and spin it around, I'll get a perfect circle. Not bad, huh? Well, I like to use a slightly smaller belt sander to do these edges because it's easier to hold. Now I'm going to round over the bottom edge of my top with a quarter inch rounding over bit. Now I'll round over the top edge with a 3 8 inch radius rounding over bit. <laughs> Under the top, there's a couple cleats. And they'll help keep it flat, but more importantly, they're part of the mechanism that allows the top to go up and down. And they're slightly tapered on the ends. So I've taken some straight stock, laid out the taper lines, and I'll cut them over on the bandsaw. Well, the joiner does a nice job smoothing out the bandsaw cut. Now I'm going to bring it over to my miter box and cut it back at about 33 degrees to follow the curve of the table. All right, that counter bore will allow me to recess the screw head so that you won't see it. And now I'm going to switch to a smaller bit to drill all the way through for the shank of the screw.
Notice that I'm moving the drill back and forth to enlarge the screw hole so that it can move around as the top expands and contracts. Well, those screws will hold the cleats to the top. Our top is attached to the base with some dowel pins. The one in the back acts like a pivot or a hinge to convert it from a chair to a table. And the one in the front just locks the table in place. With the pieces clamped together and a backer board here so as the drill bit goes through it won't split the wood, I'm ready to drill the holes using a half inch brad point bit and I'll go through both pieces at once. Well, it's time to start working on the draw. And if you look at the front, it's a piece of three quarter inch poplar and it's been rabbited on all four edges so that it'll overlap the base. And I'll make that rabbit using my three eighths inch rabbiting bit in my router. Well, now the back and the sides of my drawer are made from half inch pine. And the side is dovetailed to the front. Now I'm using my dovetail jig again, except this time I've set it up for half inch blind dovetails. And the instructions call for me to do the part separately, so I'll work on the front first. Now I just take the side pieces and slide them in and cut the pins with the router. Well, the table saw is next. I've set it up with the dado cutter, and I need to make a quarter inch groove to hold the plywood bottom. Now, with a slight adjustment to the rip fence to compensate for the rabbit, I'll put a groove in the draw front for the plywood bottom. The sides have a dado to accept the back piece. Makes it stronger and it's attractive. Now to make that dado, I've just widened the dado head cutter to half inch and I'm ready to run the sides through. Next I want to put a decorative edge on the draw front and I'll use my router table with a quarter inch rounding over bit and after that I'll be ready for some assembly. Now here's where a little bit of glue helps. Now I just slide the bottom in. And now the back. A couple brads into the back. Lay it down. Put a square on it to make sure it's square. Put a couple nails in the bottom. Now let's see how the draw fits in here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, we'll put the knob on after we figure out how we're going to finish this piece. Well, let's see how it sits. Ah, that feels good. I'm using a walnut stain on the hardwood parts of this project. Because the maple is so dense, I'm going to let the stain sit on there for quite a while before I try to rub any of it off. I'm going to prime and paint the rest of this project. But before I do that, I want to make sure I get a good coat of my water-based satin finished polyurethane on all the parts that I stained earlier. Here I'm applying an undercoat to the raw wood, and it should dry in about 45 minutes. The color of this enamel is autumn rose. I think it's going to look pretty nice when it's finished. It's nice to know that this ingenious design would be as useful in today's home as it was 200 years ago. Mm -hmm.